Child's pose, you bring your toes together to touch and your knees straight out in opposite directions. Bringing the palms out to a wide V here. And then shutting the eyes down. Letting your third eye melt towards the earth. And letting go of whatever happened today. Letting go of that mental to-do list you have swarming around in your head and seeing if you can connect to your mat, to this moment. Shutting the eyes down here and taking that breath. The world has slowed down, so we have the opportunity to discover ourselves. So can you ground down into your child's pose? Can you be here? Starting to bring awareness to the cadence of your breath, noticing how that breath makes your belly rise and fall. I invite you to set an intention for today's practice, whether that's something or someone that inspires you. Maybe it's a moment today that made you smile inside, or maybe it's a simple word. Seeing if you can ground down into this breath, starting to bring awareness to your body. Inhale, fill the belly, fill the lungs, let the collarbone expand, holding the breath at the top of the throat, and then sealing the lips, audible exhale, let something go. On the next inhale, fill the belly, fill the lungs, let the collarbone expand, holding the breath at the top of the throat, and then releasing for five, four, three, two, one. Inhale, fill the belly, big breath, fill the lungs, let the collarbone expand, holding this breath at the top of the throat. Exhaling for five, four, three, two, one. Inhale, fill the belly, fill the lungs. This time we're sealing the lips and letting the heat escape through both nostrils. Starting to dial into our ujjayi pranayama, our victorious breath. As you inhale, fill the belly, fill the lungs, let the collarbone expand, and then sealing the lips, letting the heat escape through both nostrils. Creating that slight constriction in the back of your throat as if you're fogging up a glass or a mirror. Can you bring your awareness to your breath and your body? Taking this opportunity to come back to that intention and then inhale, start to open the eyes, maybe a slight gaze to the nose and then walking the palms towards the body. Coming into a neutral tabletop pose here. Wrists are directly underneath the shoulder blades, knees are underneath the hips. We untuck the toes, drop the belly low, open up the chest, gaze as high to the sky, bolstering your heart towards the stars. Take one big inhale. Exhale, ground down into the palms, round the spine, gazes to the navel, cat pose. Inhale, drop the belly low, open up the chest, send your tailbone high. Exhale, can you ground down into those palms, round the spine, slightly protract in the shoulder blades, gazes to the navel. Inhale, coming back to neutral tabletop pose. We're coming all the way down to our forearms. So we're in a forearm tabletop pose, and we're going to run through two more cat-cows here. Drop the belly low, send the gaze high. You should feel an opening in between the shoulder blades. And then exhale, ground down into the forearms and palms, really round in the spine, gaze is towards the navel. Inhale, drop the belly low, open up the chest, send the gaze high. And then exhale, ground down into the palms, round the spine, gaze to the navel. Inhale, tucking the toes and then rising all the way up, finding our forearm plank. In this forearm plank, can you send the hips towards the earth, slightly tucking that tailbone in, pushing your forearms and palms into the ground as you find a slight protraction in your shoulder blades. Gaze is in between the palms, we're holding here for 10, Nine, eight, seven, six, 
five, four, three, you got this yogis, two, one, drop onto the knees, finding that child's pose, letting that breath go, ha. And then inhale, walk the palms close to the body, finding that neutral tabletop. In this neutral tabletop, our wrists are directly underneath the shoulder blades, knees are underneath the hips. We're tucking our toes this time and then rising two inches off the earth in this lifted beast pose. Push the earth away from you, find that slight protraction in the shoulder blades, gazes in between the palms. Taking a look at those knees, making sure they are in fact two and a half inches off the earth. Can you push the earth away from you here? Feel your shoulder blades engage. We're holding here for five. If you're looking for a little bit more of a challenge, go ahead and run through a few cat cows with lifted knees. If you're with me for four, three, two, one, lifting the hips high to the sky, finding your first Ardha Mukha Svanasana of this practice. In this downward facing dog, creating that inverted V shape with our body, taking this opportunity to generously bend in both knees, walking that dog out. Our feet are hips width distance apart. Our palms are a little bit wider than shoulder width distance. We're grounding down into the base knuckle of the index finger and the thumb, and then sending the heart towards the thighs, gaze is in between the ankles, we're elongating the neck. Take one full breath in this downward facing dog, inhale, fill your lungs, expand. Exhale, release. Inhale, both heels lift high to the sky. Exhale, release them deep into the earth. Gazes in between the palms, we look, step, jump, or hop to the top of our mat. Inhale, halfway lift, Adha Uttanasana, creating a number seven with your spine. Shoulder blades tuck into the back wall as the crown of your head lifts forward. As if you have a favorite plate of food on your back, creating that flat surface. Or a glass of wine, if you prefer, Val, I'm talking to you. Exhale, forward fold, release. Inhale, roots arise, reach all the way up, reaching with intention here, taking your time, reaching for the four corners of the room. Maybe taking a slight back bend here, tuck the tailbone, gazes towards the thumbs. And then exhale, swan dive, meeting with the chest, hinging at the hips, coming all the way down. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, plant the palms, high plank. After listening in this high plank, we're holding here. Pushing the earth away from you, slightly tucking that tailbone in, making sure our heels are above our toes. We're bringing the left forearm down towards the earth, and then followed by the right for that forearm plank. On the next inhale, big belly breath, fill the belly, fill the lungs. Exhale, we're starting to bring all the weight onto this left side, and then finding a mini vashistasana on your forearm or side plank. Option to drop down to those hips if this is too much for you. Taking one big inhale here, fill the belly, find expansion through the lungs. Exhale, bring the right forearm down to the earth. And then the left palm up, finding that high plank. Taking one breath in this high plank, fill the belly, fill the lungs. Exhale, tuck the elbows into the ribs, lower all the way down onto our bellies. And then untucking the toes, finding your low cobra or bhujangasana. Grounding down into the shoelace portions of your feet, sending the crown of your head to reach forward, your chin slightly towards the voice box. Maybe you challenge yourself here and lift those palms off the earth, magnetizing the elbows towards one another. Take one big inhale here, fill the belly. Can you lift a little bit higher? Exhale, plant the palms, tuck the toes, roll over, downward facing up. Taking one big inhale here, fill the belly. Exhale, release. Inhale, gazes in between the palms. We look, step, jump, or hop to the top of our mat. Inhale, halfway lift, Abdha Uttanasana. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, root to rise. Really take your time and reach with intention, feeling an opening in the back. Maybe taking a slight back bend here, sending your gaze towards the thumb. And then exhale, swan dive, leading with the chest, hinging at the hips. Inhale, out of the Uttanasana. Exhale, plant the palms, finding your high plank. Option to drop down to your knees if you'd like. If you're with me, my right forearm comes down to the earth first. 
and then my left follows. Taking one big breath in this forearm plank, seeing if you can find your balance, pushing the forearms into the earth, finding that protraction in your shoulder blades. One big breath here, inhale, fill up. Exhale, slowly bringing the weight onto the right side and then finding Vashisasana on your forearm on the right side. Option to drop those hips down here, activate in the core to find more stability, push the earth away from you with this right palm. We're here for one more breath. Inhale, fill the belly. Exhale, left palm comes down towards the earth. And then right palm lifts all the way up, finding that high plank. Taking one inhale in this high plank, fill the belly. Exhale, tuck the elbows into the ribs, lower down, Chaturanga Dandasana. Upward facing dog, arc the chest through, push the earth away from you, sending the crown of your head forward. Tilting the chin, taking one big inhale here. And then exhale, rolling over the toes, Adha Mukha Svanasana. Taking one breath in this down dog to reset. Gaze is in between the ankles, elongate your neck. Maybe you have a slight bend in the knees here. Maybe your legs are straight. Remembering that this is your practice and your safe space to play. Inhale, reset, both heels high to the sky. Exhale, sink them deep into the earth. Inhale, gaze in between the palms. We look, step, walk, jump, or hop to the top of our mat. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, root to rise, reach all the way up. Active listening, we're grabbing for this left wrist. And then moving over towards the right side, grounding down into this right heel. Can you spiral your chest towards the ceiling? Take one breath here. And then exhale, can you sink a little bit deeper? <sighs> Inhale through center. Exhale, grabbing the right wrist, moving over towards the left side, grounding down into this left heel. And then spiraling your chest towards the ceiling. With this next exhale, can you sink a little bit deeper? Inhale, fill the belly, fill the lungs. Exhale, sink deep. <sighs> Inhale through center. Exhale, swan dive, leading with the chest, hinging at the hips, coming all the way down. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, plant the palms, high to low plank, you flow, you grow. Chaturanga, check in, tuck those elbows into the ribs as you lower down. Upward facing dog or low cobra, arc the chest through, push the earth away from you with those palms, letting the shoulder blades melt away from the ears. And then exhale, rolling over the toes, finding downward facing dog. Taking a moment in this down dog to come back to that intention. Inhale, fill the belly. Exhale, dropping down to the knees, finding that tabletop pose. In this tabletop pose, running through one cat cow just to reset, untuck the toes, drop the belly low, feel the openness in that chest. And then exhale, ground down into the palms, round the spine, gaze to the navel. Inhale, coming back to neutral. Tucking those toes, paying attention to your architectural lines. Are your wrists directly underneath the shoulders and are your knees directly underneath the hips? We're tucking the toes and rising two inches off the earth, finding that lifted tabletop one more time. We're creating strength with micro movements here. The familiarity of this pose is gonna make you stronger. Can you find two cat cows in this lifted pose? Drop the belly low, open up the chest, gaze as high to the sky, rolls to your heart. And then exhale, ground down into the palms, round the spine, gaze into the navel. One more cat cow, you got this, yogis. Drop the belly low, open up the chest. And then exhale, ground down into the palms, protract the shoulders, gaze into the navel. Inhale, back to neutral just for one breath, you got this, yogis. Exhale, downward facing dog. Ha! Beautiful breath, yogis, in this downward facing dog. Creating that inverted V-shape with our bodies. First, bringing both feet together to touch at the back of our mats. And then inhaling right leg high to the sky, three-legged dog. Maybe you point your toe in this three-legged dog. Or maybe you square it off finding an internal rotation of the hips. Pointing the toes towards the earth. We're bending at the knee and then starting to create these big circles here. First, moving clockwise. 
and then maybe switching the direction to counterclockwise. Getting juicy in the synovial fluid of the hip. Inhale, three-legged dog. Exhale, right knee, or excuse me, right heel towards left glute, scorpion tail. If your right armpit shoots up towards the ceiling, can you square it off towards your mat? Grounding evenly into both palms, take one big inhale here. Exhale, three-legged dog. Inhale, fill the belly. Exhale, right knee to nose, round the spine, crunch it in, shoulders over wrists, hold. Inhale, three-legged dog. Exhale, right knee to right elbow, make a connection, hold. Inhale, three-legged dog. Right knee to left elbow, cross body, hold. Active listening or sliding that knee down to the wrist and then inhaling, shooting it back up, three-legged dog. Right knee to nose, round the spine, crunch it in, plant the foot in between the palms. We're dropping that bottom knee towards the earth. Keeping the left palm grounded, opening up for a modified easy twist. Our left knee is grounded. In this modified easy twist, can you sweep this right foot all the way back? Finding a modified half moon on your mat. Maybe you stay here in this modified half moon. Maybe you come in for a little bit more, bringing the knee towards the elbow for one. Exhale, reach forward. Knee to elbow for two. You got this. Exhale, reach forward. One more time, elbow to knee, really crunch it in, feel those obliques. Exhale, reach forward, bringing both palms towards the earth, tucking this left toe, and then bringing the knees, or excuse me, the elbows to grab into the ribs, coming all the way down for a mini Chaturanga push-up. Inhale, push the earth away from you. Bringing the left toes to meet the right, you're in your high plank. And then choosing to finish your vinyasa, tucking the elbows into the ribs, lowering down. Upward facing dog, pull the chest through. Exhale, big toes come together to touch. Knees jet out in opposite directions, sending your chest towards your mat, finding your child's pose. Taking this moment to come back to the breath. Remembering here that we're taking our time, finding strength in this foundational flow. Use this opportunity to bring your awareness back to that intention that you set in the beginning of class. Inhale, fill the belly. Exhale, release. Inhale, walking the palms close to the body, finding that Adha Mukha Svanasana, or downward facing dog. Grounding down to the base knuckles of the index finger and the thumb, bringing both feet together at the back of your mat. And then inhale, left foot lifts high to the sky, maybe pointing your toe in your three-legged dog, or squaring that hip off by bringing the toes to find a slight inner rotation, sending them towards the earth. Bending at the knee and then starting to draw these big circles, moving clockwise. And then switching the direction to counterclockwise, getting juicy in this left hip. Inhale, three-legged dog. Exhale, left knee to right glute. Open up for this scorpion tail. If the left armpit opens up towards the ceiling, can you square it off towards the earth? Ground it evenly into both palms. Take one big inhale here. Exhale, three-legged dog. Inhale, push the palms into the earth. Exhale, left knee to nose. Round the spine, crunch it in. Shoulders over wrists. Hold. Three-legged dog. Left knee to left elbow, make a connection, hold. Inhale, three-legged dog. Exhale, left knee to right elbow, cross body, hold. We're sliding the left knee towards the wrist, and then inhaling, shooting it back up for three-legged dog. Left knee to nose, round the spine, crunch it in, plant the left foot in between the palms. We're grounding the right knee towards the earth, keeping the right palm grounded, and then opening up for that modified easy twist towards the opposite side. Can you ground down into this right palm here, sweep the left leg back, finding that modified Ardha Chandrasana, or modified half moon. Maybe you stay here opening the chest, or maybe you come with me for a few extra obliques. Knee to elbow, crunch it in. Exhale, reach forward. Knee to elbow, really crunch it in, feel those obliques work. Exhale, reach. 
Last one, elbow to knee. You got this, yogis. Building this core strength for this headstand. And then bringing the left palm towards the earth. Tucking the left toes towards the earth and then tucking the right toes as well. Tucking the elbows into the ribs, coming down for this chaturanga push-up, modify. And then exhale, coming back up, finding that high plank. Tucking the elbows into the ribs, lowering down, arcing the chest through, upward facing dog. And then exhale, big toes come together to touch, chest comes down to the earth, child's pose. <sighs> Taking this moment to come back to that breath. Maybe bringing the forehead or the third eye towards the earth to give it a little massage, moving it back and forth on your mat. Inhale, locking the palms close to the body, and then finding that downward facing dog. In this downward facing dog, paying attention to that alignment, both feet come together to touch, and then right foot lifts high to the sky. Starting to draw circles with this right knee, moving clockwise, and then switching the direction to counterclockwise. Inhale, right leg high to the sky. Exhale, right knee, or excuse me, right heel towards left glute, opening up for that scorpion tail. If the right armpit shoots up towards the ceiling, can you square it off towards your mat? Three-legged dog. Exhale, right knee to nose, round the spine, crunch it in. Back to three-legged dog. Right knee to nose, round the spine, crunch it in one more time, and then plant the right foot in between the palms. We're pivoting that back foot to 45 degrees and then rising up to your Virabhadrasana 1, Warrior 1. In this Warrior 1, we're creating a right angle with the right knee. Our back foot is pivoted to 45 degrees. Our gaze is in between the palms of the shoulder blades melt down the spine. We have a heel-to-heel -heel alignment, so that means if there's a laser shooting out from this right heel, it should bisect the left heel. Taking one big full breath in. You got this, yogis. Fill the belly. Exhale, bring the palms together to clasp. Lift the chest high to the sky. And then surrender the heart down, finding humble warrior. Crown of the head reaches towards the earth. In this humble warrior, can you use your fists as steering agents to square off this right hip? Taking one big inhale here. Fill the belly. Exhale, release. Inhale, rising up back to warrior one for just one moment. Take one big inhale here. Exhale, pivot the back foot, finding warrior two, Virabhadrasana two on the opposite side. In this Virabhadrasana, your hips are square towards the left. Your drishti or gaze is in between the right fingertips, letting the shoulder blades melt away from the ears. Inhale, reach for something you desire, committing to the bend in the front knee, finding peaceful warrior. And then exhale, straightening in both legs, reaching for something you desire with this right palm. Reach all the way until you can't anymore. And then find your trikonasana triangle pose. Maybe having to shorten your stance in that trikonasana, which is totally fine. Think of your body as a piece of toast trying to fit in the toaster. Or is your body in a pane of glass? Gaze is to the left fingertips here. Take one big inhale here. Trying not to dump all the weight into this right palm. Maybe you push against the shin to lift up a little bit higher. One more breath. Inhale. Exhale. Reverse trikonasana, straightening in both legs, reaching for that back wall. And then exhale, cartwheeling the palms to frame the right foot. Maybe shortening that stance a bit, finding pyramid pose. Seeing if you can get juicy in this right hamstring. Sending the chest and chin down towards the shin, finding a flat back. If this is enough for you, you can always stay. If you're looking for a little bit more, we're coming into flamingo pose. So bringing both fingers to reach for the back of your mat. And then lifting off, finding a little bit of hang time or stack, bringing the weight onto the right foot. And then if you're ready, slow and controlled, lifting the left toes off the earth so they peak off, giving it a little point. Sending the gaze towards the right shin here. Take one big inhale here. Exhale, release. Back in that pyramid pose, bringing the palms to frame the right foot. 
and then lifting the left heel high to the sky, finding that standing split. If handstand hops are in your practice, you're more than welcome to play. If you're with me, I'm bringing my right forearm to wrap around my right calf, sending my chin and gaze towards the right shin, finding a slight inner rotation of this left foot squaring off the hip. Take one more big inhale here. You got this, yogis. Exhale, right palm comes down to the earth, left foot comes to meet the right. Grabbing opposite elbows, finding ragdoll pose. Ha. In this ragdoll pose, generous bend in both knees, inviting the chest to kiss the thighs. Can you find a decompression in your neck and spine, letting gravity do its work, rocking back and forth? On the next inhale, bringing both toes together to touch, finding a slight inner rotation, a little gap in between the heels. We're grabbing onto the elbows here, really pushing into the elbows, finding our shoulders engaged. And then inhale, bending at the knees, rising up for Utkatasana chair pose with the bind. In this Utkatasana chair pose, take a look at your alignment. If your knees surpass your toes, can you bring that ass back? Send the gaze high and slightly tuck the tailbone in, finding a natural curvature of the spine. As if you're trying to rip your mat in two, feel your outer glutes turn on. We're here for five, four, really push into those elbows, feel your shoulders engage. Three, two, one, forward fold, plant the palms, find that vinyasa high to low plank. Option to skip the vinyasa and meet in your child's pose, arcing the chest through upward facing dog. And then exhale, bringing the big toes together, letting the chest melt down towards the earth. Ah, letting that breath go. Taking this opportunity to towel off, maybe grab some water here. Maybe coming back to that intention. Why is it that you showed up on your mats tonight? What brought you here? Maybe it's that physical practice. Maybe it's that mental practice. Maybe it's a little bit of both. Inhale, fill the belly. Exhale, release something that no longer serves you. Ha. <sighs> Inhale, walk the palms close to the body, finding Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. And then bringing both toes together at the back of your mat, Taking one reset breath, inhale, both heels high to the sky. Exhale, sink them deep into the earth. Inhale, left leg lifts high to the sky. Option to point the toe or point the toes towards the earth to square off the hips. Bending at the knee and drawing those big circles here. First moving clockwise and then switching the direction to counterclockwise. Inhale, three-legged dog, scorpion tailing, left heel towards right glute. If the left armpit shoots up towards the ceiling, can you square it off towards your mat? Inhale, three-legged dog. Exhale, left knee to nose, round the spine, crunch it in, shoulders over wrists. Maybe your knee touches your nose. Inhale, three-legged dog. A beautiful kiss, knee to nose, round the spine, crunch it in. Can you give your knee a kiss? Exhale, three-legged dog. Right knee to nose, round the spine, crunch it in, plant the left foot in between the palms, excuse me, and then pivot the right foot 45 degrees while rising all the way up, finding your Madrasana 1 or Warrior 1 on the opposite side. Using this Warrior 1 as your active resting pose, you got this, yogis, creating that right angle with the left knee. Our back foot is pivoted to 45 degrees, grounding down evenly into both feet so you can zip up through your pelvic floor. Inhale, fill the belly. Exhale, release. Inhale, both palms come together to clasp, lifting the chest towards the ceiling. And then surrendering that heart down, finding humble warrior, crown of the head reaches for your mat. In this humble warrior, can you use these fists as a steering agent to send the left hip all the way back? Taking one more expansive breath here, inhale. Exhale, warrior one. One full breath in this warrior one. Inhale, fill the belly. Exhale, pivot the back toes, finding Virabhadrasana two or warrior two on the opposite side. 
In this warrior two, squaring your hips towards the right side. Drishti or gaze is in between the left fingertips. Reaching for something you desire here and then committing to that bed and finding that peaceful warrior. And then exhale, straightening in both legs, reaching for something you desire until you can't reach anymore. Finding and transitioning into your Chikonasana triangle pose. Options in your Chikonasana, maybe you find a bind here. Maybe you bring the left palm to reach in towards the shin, lifting up a little bit higher, gaze is to the right fingertips. Can you take a big breath here? Inhale, fill your belly. Feel the expansion through this right lung. And then exhale, release. <sighs> Inhale, reverse Chikonasana, reaching for that back wall. And then exhale, cartwheeling the palms to frame the left foot. Shortening the stance a bit to find that pyramid pose. And then sending your chest and chin down towards the shin, keeping a flat back. If this is enough for you, you can always stay. If you're looking for a little bit more, we're gonna move into flamingo pose. Bringing both palms to reach for the back of your mat, sending the weight and gaze towards this left foot, seeing if you can slowly start to peak the right toes high, sending the gaze towards the left shin. Can you inhale, feel your hamstring engage? Exhale, can you sink a little bit deeper? One more breath in this pyramid pose. Keep the right toes pointed. Exhale, release it back down, pyramid pose. Bringing both palms to frame this left foot. And then rising up, finding your standing split, right leg high to the sky. Options for some handstand hops here if inversions are in your practice. If you're with me, I bring my left palm to hug my calf. See if I can send my right heel towards the sky, sending my gaze towards the left shin. Finding an inner rotation of the toes, squaring off the hips. One more breath. Exhale, right foot comes down to meet the left. Grabbing opposite elbows, ragdoll pose. Running through a few lines, breath here. Inhale, fill the belly, fill the lungs. Exhale, stick that tongue out, let that shit go. <sighs> One more lion's breath. Inhale, fill the belly, fill the lungs. Exhale, all that worry, all that doubt, all that fear, let that shit go. <sighs> stick that tongue out. Big toes come together to touch. A slight inner rotation and a gap in between the heels. Switching the grips from your elbows, because chances are you found the most comfortable grip. Grabbing into those elbows, seeing if you can push the elbows into the palms, finding your shoulder blades engage. And then bending at the knee, rising all the way up, Utkatasana chair pose with the bind. In this Utkatasana chair pose, take a look at your alignment. If your knees surpass the heels, send that ass back. Gaze as high to the sky, slightly tuck the tailbone in, find the natural curvature of the spine. Just like life yogis, when things get tough, we stay up. Can you inhale, fill the belly, fill the lungs. Exhale, sink two inches lower. Inhale, fill the belly, fill the lungs. Exhale, sink. Don't give up, yogis, you got this. Inhale, fill the belly, fill the lungs. Exhale, plant the palms to the earth. Option for a curl pose here if you'd like. Bringing both palms into the earth, creating a number 11 with our index fingers. Bringing all the weight onto the toes here and then maybe bringing the knees to tuck into the armpits. Creating a little shelf here with your forearm and tricep, maybe one toe lifts off the earth today. While your gaze is far beyond the top of your mat, maybe the other toe lifts off. Maybe no toes lift off the earth today and that's totally okay. Whenever you're ready, choosing your journey back to your vinyasa, jump back, step back, maybe skipping the vinyasa entirely, and then meeting in your child's pose at the back of your mat. Big toes come together to touch. Forehead comes down to the earth. Taking one big inhale here, fill the belly, fill the lungs. Exhale, release. 
Coming back to that breath, to that intention. Inhale, fill the belly, fill the lungs. Exhale, start to slide the chest and chin, coming down for a puppy pose. Sending and making sure your toes are untucked. Bringing your chin towards the earth. Gazes to the top of the mat. Maybe you slide down for a little bit more of a juicier puppy pose, taking your time. And then when you're ready, slithering all the way down into your modified Sphinx pose. Modified Sphinx pose, because sometimes you have to modify to get in, and that's okay. Magnetizing the elbows towards the ribs here, pushing the palms into the earth, and then sending the gaze first high to the sky. Can you ground down into the shoelace portions of the feet and then slightly tuck the chin down towards the throat box, sending the crown of the head to reach forward? Taking one breath here in the Sphinx Pose. Exhale, release all the way down. Bringing both palms a little bit wider than your mat here. And then a little bit lining up with your shoulder blades, tenting at the fingertips. We're keeping our bottom feet grounded into the earth, our bottom feet. We only have one foot, but the top shoelace portion of our feet Grounding down, inhale, lift the chest and chin, send the gaze high. Exhale, right shoulder towards the earth, sending the gaze behind the left shoulder blade. Taking one expansive breath here, inhale, fill the belly. Exhale, release, through center. Inhale, lift all the way up, grounding down into the shoelace portion of the feet, lifting the gaze. And then exhale, left shoulder blade comes down to the earth, gaze is behind the right shoulder. Inhale, fill the belly. Exhale, reach back up and then release. <sighs> Bringing both palms on the back of the neck here. You can interlace your fingers, just resting on the neck. Maybe letting the forehead rest to the earth for just one moment. On the next inhale, we're grounding down into the shoelace portion of the tops of our feet. Using the core to rise all the way up, bringing a flat back, sending the elbows to jet out in opposite directions. Engaging in the core, letting the chin rest down towards the chest, taking one big inhale here. Exhale, plant the palms, find your Ardha Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. Taking this opportunity to generously bend in both knees. Here we go, yogis. Both feet come together to touch at the back of your mat. And then inhale, right leg high to the sky, three like a dog. Drawing circles with the right knee. And then switching the direction, making sure we're open in this hip before we scorpion tail the right heel towards left glute. If that right armpit shoots up, you know to square off towards your mat, grounding evenly into both palms. Taking one big inhale here. Exhale, grounding down into this left palm, finding your flip dog if you're ready for it. Reaching for something you desire with the right palm, maybe giving a little wave here. And then slow and controlled right palm comes down to the earth. Right foot lifts high to the sky, three-legged dog. Right knee to nose, round the spine, crunch it in, shoulders over wrists. Exhale, three-legged dog. Right knee to right elbow, make a connection, hold. We're sliding that knee down to the right wrist. And then inhale, shooting it back up, three-legged dog. Right knee to nose, round the spine, crunch it in, plant the right foot in between the palms. We're pivoting that back foot to 45 degrees and then rising up for that Virabhadrasana one, warrior one. In this warrior one, can you ground down into both feet evenly and zip up through the pelvic floor? Gaze is in between the palms, squaring off the right hip towards the back of the room. Inhale, fill the belly. Exhale, release. Control the breath, control the mind. One more inhale, fill the belly. Exhale, bring the palms together to clasp, lifting the chest high to the sky. And then surrendering that heart down, finding humble warrior. In this humble warrior, we're taking one big inhale here. And then exhale, rising all the way back up, warrior one. Pivoting both toes toward, or excuse me, pivoting the back foot, finding that warrior two. Bending into this right knee here. 
reaching for something you desire, and then finding that peaceful warrior. Straightening in both legs, finding that trigonasana triangle pose. Gaze to the left fingertips here, opening up the chest, slightly tucking the tailbone in. Inhale, reaching behind you, reverse trigonasana. Exhale, back to trigonasana. One more time, inhale, reverse trigonasana. Exhale, bend into that front right knee, finding warrior two. And then straightening in both legs, pivoting both toes towards the left side. Grabbing opposite hips here, bending out the knees to avoid hyperextension. And then sending the crown of your head down towards the earth for a wide-legged forward fold. Maybe you stay here in this wide-legged forward fold. Maybe the crown of your head reaches down towards the earth. Option to find your inversion here. If you'd like or if you're with me, I'm bringing my right palm towards my left ankle. Opening up the chest, finding a flat back, taking one big inhale here. Exhale, release through center. Halfway with flat back, push the palms into the earth. Exhale, release. Left palm towards right ankle, opening up the chest here. Finding a flat back, lifting. And then exhale, back to center. Bending at both knees, grabbing opposite hips here to avoid hyperextension, finding that flat back. And then exhale, pivoting both toes towards the front of the room. Sending the chest all the way down towards the shin, flat back, coming into a modified pyramid. Planting both palms to the earth and then sweeping the right foot all the way back. Maybe keeping it lifted for a one-legged chaturanga as you finish your vinyasa, tucking the elbows into the ribs and then lowering all the way down. Upward facing dog, pull the chest through. Exhale, roll over the toes, downward facing dog. Finding this down dog here, taking a few deep breaths to come back to your breath. Can you send the gaze in between the ankles, let the neck really relax here? Taking one inhale here, both heels lift high to the sky. Exhale, release. Can you sink them deep into the earth? Inhale, left foot, or excuse me, both feet come to meet at the back of the mat, and then left foot reaches high to the sky. Drawing circles with that left knee moving clockwise and then counterclockwise. Scorpion tail in that left heel, left heel towards right glute. If the armpit shoots up towards the ceiling, can you square it off? Three-legged dog. Back to that scorpion tail, grounding down into this right palm, maybe flipping that dog over, reaching for something you desire with the left palm. Maybe giving a little wave here. And then slow and controlled, left palm comes down to the earth. Left foot lifts high to the sky. Left knee to nose, round the spine, crunch it in, shoulders over wrists, hold. Three-legged dog. Left knee to left elbow, make a connection. We're sliding that left knee down to the wrist. Inhale, three-legged dog. Left knee to nose, round the spine, crunch it in, plant the foot in between the palms. Pivot that back leg, rise up, Virabhadrasana 1, Warrior 1 on the left side. Giving yourself a little smile in this Warrior 1. Inhale, fill the belly, control the breath, control the mind. Exhale, release. Inhale, fill the belly, fill the lungs, bring the palms together to clasp, lifting the chest high. And then sending the heart down, finding that humble warrior, forehead or crown of the head reaches for the mat. Squaring off the head, taking one big inhale here. And then meeting in that Virabhadrasana one. One breath here. Exhale, pivot that back leg, finding warrior two on the opposite side. Seeing if you can generously bend, committing to the bend in this left knee. Reaching for something you desire and then pulling all the way back, finding your peaceful warrior. Straightening in both legs, finding a smooth transition into Trikonasana Triangle Pose. Gaze is in between the right fingertips here, squaring the hips off, or excuse me, tucking the tailbone in, sending the gaze towards the right fingers. Inhale, reaching back behind you, reverse Trikonasana. 
Exhale, find fluidity in this flow. Gaze as to the right fingertips. Inhale, reverse Trikonasana. Exhale, bending into that left knee, finding that warrior two. Letting the shoulder blades melt away from the earth here. Straightening in both legs, pivoting both toes towards the right side. Grabbing opposite hips, bending generously in those knees, and then sending the heart down towards the earth, finding that wide-legged forward fold. Option to send the crown of the head down to the earth, finding one halfway lift, push the earth away from you, flat back. Exhale, release. Left palm reaches towards the right ankle, sending the gaze towards the right, and then keeping that flat back, lifting up. Exhale through center. Right palm to left ankle, open up the chest, finding that flat back. Exhale through center. Grabbing opposite hips, bending in both knees, and then rising up, finding that flat back. Pivoting both toes towards the front of the room, finding a modified pyramid pose. Keeping the bind on the hips here, sending the chest down. And then melting the heart down towards this left thigh. Grounding both palms into the earth, sweeping this left foot back. Maybe finding that high plank, maybe keeping this left foot lifted. Tucking the elbows into the ribs, lowering all the way down, upward facing dog, arc the chest through. Exhale, bringing both knees in towards the body, finding a modified hero's pose. Bringing palms into heart center here, coming back to your breath. Taking a moment of gratitude here for your capable beating heart. So many people in this world do not have the opportunity to be here on their mats at this moment. Can we take this time to fill our breath with gratitude? And then exhale fear, exhale doubt. One more introspective breath. Inhale, fill the belly, fill the lungs. Exhale, release. So we're going to grab our socks now. Whichever socks you have will do. And if you're on carpet, that's fine. Just a little bit of a yogi drill to get us going to move into headstand safely. So putting the socks on, I know we did a lot of core, a lot of opening in the shoulders, feeling what it's like to really press your body weight into the earth and feel it lift off. So we're going to do one little yogi drill here. And what that is, is we're coming down onto our forearms. We're creating a little bind here. So basically intertwining all the fingers together and then sending the thumbs high. Planting them down into the earth with your forearms. And then simply just letting your belly come all the way down. So we're kind of like in a modified Sphinx pose. And then when you're ready, grounding down into these forearms, we're using our socks. If it's a little bit tough for you and you'd like to modify, you can tuck the toes and that'll make it a little bit easier. If you're ready for that core challenge, untuck the toes and lift off, sliding, finding that engagement in the core. Pipe that ass up. Take one big inhale here. Exhale, release, slide down. We have four more of these together. You can do it on your own speed, on your own time. Enabling yourself to feel that lift in your forearms, rising up, sending the crown of the head down, piping your booty up. And then exhale, release. Three more, inhale, spike that butt up, find the gaze in between the ankles, and then exhale, release. Two more yogis, you've got this, inhale, slide the feet up, find the engagement in the core. Exhale, release. Last one, inhale, pike up, find the engagement, send the forearms to the earth. And then exhale, release, bring both palms to the earth. And then removing our socks. You guys are on mute, but I bet you're saying, what the fudge? All this core. But I promise you, it's going to all come together right now. 
So we're getting into this shirshasana or headstand safely. First coming into that tabletop pose, coming full circle in our practice. Wrists directly underneath the shoulder blades, knees underneath the hips. Coming all the way down to the forearms once again. And then finding that grip. So interlacing the fingers, leaving the thumbs out. And then simply bringing the crown of your head down towards the earth. Now, before we do any lifting on the lower half of your body, I want you to feel the protraction in the shoulder blades. Can you push the earth away from you with those forearms, almost finding your head to lift completely off the earth? One more time, inhale, push the forearms into the earth, lift the head up, and then exhale, release. Walking the palms close to the body, bringing both palms behind the neck, and then simply moving from side to side, finding a little bit of a counter stretch. Maybe moving the chin up and down, giving yourself a little bit of a wiggle. And then coming all the way back down. So we can start in that tabletop pose, coming down to our forearms, finding that clasp, leaving the thumbs out, sending the crown of the head towards your mat. Tucking at the toes and then lifting off into kind of like a dolphin pose, but your crown of the head is towards the earth. If this is enough for you, you can always stay. If you're ready for a little bit more, start to walk the feet closer until you find the stack. And if you have a wall beside you or would like to use it, I recommend. And I don't want you to kick up, but I want you to simply come onto the right toes and feel the lift almost like that flamingo pose that we did. Come back to your knees. Find that child's pose. One more time coming into those steps. First in that tabletop. Coming down to those forearms. Grip gripping through the palms, finding that interlaced thumbs are up. Setting the crown of your head towards the earth, creating a little yamaka on the back of your head. Tucking the toes here and then rising up to that dolphin pose. Maybe here you walk the feet a little bit closer, finding the stack. And then maybe that toe starts to lift off the earth. Engaging in the core here, pushing down from the forearms. So there's almost little to no weight on the top of your head. My butt is not clenched, but I'm engaged in my feet as if I'm squeezing my thighs together. Finding a slight protraction in the shoulder blades, tuck the core in. And maybe you find a headstand here. Maybe you're still working at this dolphin pose here, finding that stack. And that's totally okay. Wherever you are today, come back down to that child's pose for that counter stretch. And if forearm, or excuse me, and if Shashashana was not in your practice today, no big deal. You have the basic foundations to strengthen that body in the core, in the shoulders. So just let all that go. Release what no longer serves you. And then inhale, walking the palms close to the body, sending the feet down in front of you, creating a little staff pose here. So that L shape with our body, we should be so active in both feet that both toes are pivoted, or excuse me, are dorsiflexing towards the shin. They're dorsiflexing towards the shin that your heels should magically lift off the earth. Inhale, root to rise, reach all the way up. Exhale, Paschimottanasana, forward fold, sending the chest down towards the earth. I want you to think chest to thigh versus nose to knee in this Paschimottanasana because I want you to keep that flat back, the integrity of your spine. So maybe that looks like this today with a slight bend in the knees. And that's just as great. Maybe you choose to come down a little bit deeper. And then inhale, walk the palms. So you're in an L-shaped position. Bringing the glutes towards the top of your mat, sending the heels towards the glutes. 
grabbing the tops of the shin, running through one cat cow here to reset. Inhale, lift the chest and chin high to the sky. Exhale, round the spine, gazes to the navel, protract the near shoulder blades. One more cat cow, inhale, lift the chest and chin, bolster your heart towards the stars. And then exhale, round the spine, crunch it in, gazes to the navel. Inhale, bring that imaginary beach ball out in front of you, and then slow and controlled, coming all the way down to your mat. Taking your time, finding that little bit of core strength you have left. You got this, yogis. Remembering to breathe, remembering to smile, and then coming all the way down onto the earth for that final resting pose. Maybe taking any final movements here, maybe that's happy baby. Maybe that's an early Shavasana. Taking up as much space as you need here, letting the breath go, letting your day go. An opportunity to shift our perspective with that headstand, viewing the world upside down when it feels like our world has been turned upside down. In a way, it feels like this headstand has my world right side up. Taking a full body scan from the crown of your head. Relaxing in between the brows. Maybe taking your tongue to slide across your top teeth. Relaxing the jaw open. Relaxing through the neck down to the shoulders. Releasing any tension in the chest, core, hips, and thighs. Can you relax in the knees, through the calves, the shins, and the ankles? Can you unclench your glutes, release the toes, and simply just be? This is what we worked for, yogis, for this moment of bliss. Shavasana. Slowly starting to blink the eyes open. Bringing awareness to your fingertips, giving them a little wiggle. And then giving your little toes a wiggle. As if you're waking up for the very first time this morning, reaching for that back wall for that good morning stretch. Exhale, both knees into the chest, giving yourself a squeeze, thanking yourself for showing up on your mats today for some self-love and some self-care. Choosing either the right or the left side to fall onto a fetal position using your bicep as a pillow. Humans are imperfect creatures. You don't succeed because you have zero weaknesses. You succeed because you find your unique strength and focus on forming habits around them. I love what this pose represents. A fresh start, a clean slate. Knowing that every single time you step off your mats and into the world is an opportunity for you to begin again. Planting both palms towards the earth, rising up to a seated position, facing any which way you desire. Bringing the palms to reach, gathering all this beautiful energy we created as a community. Our palms come down to heart center. The perfectly imperfect student in me bows, honors, and respects the teachers and all of you. Thank you for allowing me to guide you through your practice tonight. Namaste. Thank you, Yogi, so much.